Hello, I hope the streaming already started. So today we will have a non-coding stream. You may have noticed there is no music on this video. This is for a reason. Uh, I had a situation with YouTube recently, a difficult situation, but difficult situations can ultimately be good because they can make things better. So what happened was that I got a message from YouTube, which apparently is a common occurrence. Uh, it is a message about, a, it, it is a takedown notice about one of my videos. The reason for the takedown is a request from a copyright owner holder that a copyrighted song was used in one of my videos. I, I play a lot of songs, so it's quite likely that I, I may have played a copyrighted song, right? That message was sent by this company, United Media GmbH. And it was about this song, Swing, Rabbit Swing. So I naturally, I checked. So I found this song, Swing, Rabbit Swing by Amaria. Okay, so this is the author of this song, and he is publishing his own song. And that song actually is marked as a Creative Commons track. So this is a Creative Commons music. And pretty much all music that I play on my stream, I like all music that I play on my stream, I play through this, like through VLC. And when I play stuff from through VLC, you can see that on the stream, like it is displayed on the bottom. So it is it is impossible for me. So swing specifically. Yes. So that would be this song. When it was being played, this is the like notification that was being displayed. This is the name of the song, the author of the song. This is the credit for the song. So something went wrong there. So I fret about YouTube rules for this and they say that I can send, if I think there was a mistake in the process, I can send a counter notification to the to this company. So I wrote a counter notification saying that hey, this is licensed under Creative Commons by and oh, I can actually was this. The music track tracking question was published under CC by license by its creator here. The music is properly attributed in the video, the text at the bottom of the video. And the response I got, okay, it's in Polish again, so I will translate this. So let me translate. Okay, never mind. So they say that based on the information you provided, we decided you do not hold the rights to publish this content. Therefore, your counter notification was dropped. We cannot uh, recover your video and there is nothing else we can do in this case. Which seems weird. Uh, there was no justification why this counter notification was refused. And when I look at this, uh, it seems to me that there was a mistake. First, there was the mistake when probably a person from this company, or maybe an automated process, I don't know how they work, uh, like didn't look at my video. And this is just a negligence. Like they, they must have learned, like probably from YouTube, there is content ID. So they learned about my uh, their song like being played in a video, but they didn't even open my video to see like, that it's attributed. So also the thing that they say here that no worries, we got you covered and that this is not a copyright strike. This is not true what they say here. They actually did send me a copyright strike right away. There was no content ID claim on my video. Like, even in, like the first message that I got from YouTube, it was already copyright strike. And the big thing about copyright strikes is that 
they are actually a kind of a big deal because if I get three copyright strikes, my account gets deleted. Not my YouTube channel, my Google account. So this includes stuff like, uh, of course, my email. My So it will have difficulty accessing like my banking accounts. My family photos on Google Photos will be gone. My backups on Google Drive will be gone. The stuff that I bought over the years on Google Play will be gone. And like even like external services that I bought elsewhere, but which are just linked to my Google account, they will not be accessible anymore to me. So the way that this game kind of looks is that so we have there is, so there is me, I am publishing like lots of tiny videos, my channel is tiny, it's like 100 subscribers, so this is like pre pretty, I have pretty much similar number of videos to number of subscribers, so I create a lot of those coding live streams. So then there is the, so this is me. There is the U Media. They are looking at my videos and uh, somehow they are deciding whether like I am properly attributing the music in my videos. And apparently sometimes they are not doing a good job. Let's say there is like one per mile chance that they will make a mistake. Like I, I create a lot of videos, so and they just sent me one copyright strike. So there is this YouTube U Media. So then I have like a, an opportunity to appeal to YouTube. So then this case goes to YouTube. So there is a guy at YouTube, a vendor probably, like an external person hired to just review the counter notifications. And there is probably some probability that he will kind of ignore my claim, like the claim. And like the only case I, I've seen, like it was ignored, but let's be generous and let's say there is a 50% chance of, like based on my experience, it's, it's 100%, but it's just one sample. So let's, let's apply a, a, like, a Turing correction here. So it's 50% that they make a mistake. And in this whole situation, the U Media, the company which re represents artists, they actually have no incentive in being conservative here. They can just send notifications just in case. Like if they have just a, the slightest suspicion that you know the music is not attributed, they can just send a notification or, or a strike. They have no incentive in, like, in doing a good job. They can just, you know, uh, externalize those costs. Like, instead of like spending more time, they can be error on the side of too many copyright strikes. And then there is this YouTube appeal process, which is also interesting because that person at YouTube, which kind of uh, dropped the counter notification, they dropped it you know, without providing any you know, justification. So my guess is that they probably kind of were in a hurry, they just click the button ignore or something like that, like drop the case. And the problem is normally there would be a way to kind of appeal their decision. So if, if they are doing like a bad job, like they made a mistake, there should be a way to kind of, there should be a, should be a feedback mechanism no, just for their kind of work performance, uh, from their work performance perspective, there needs to be a feedback mechanism to detect when they are doing a bad job. But when they are marking stuff as, like they are drop, when they are dropping the cases, they are also closing them. So there is no way to mark kind of their mistakes as mistakes. There is no feedback going to, to the YouTube vendor who is marking those cases. So that person, they also have like zero incentive to do anything here. And 
uh, at the start of this process uh, there is me and I think I am the only person who has the incentive to do a proper job at like properly doing like taking care of the copyright here and the problem here is I think I am taking the proper care of the copyright it's just because of the mistakes down the chain I am getting copyright strikes so this is a very tough situation and to show you how kind of so like this is just how it works there is nothing we can change about this like you media doesn't care about like being conservative in their strikes youtube doesn't or like this person on youtube doesn't youtube generally might care about this but that vendor is probably just ignoring the cases so in this whole situation you know the only way to kind of solve these situations uh, this situation is that i have to change something in my videos so if i don't change anything then just to show you i publish a lot of live streams i publish like three live streams per week each of them is a couple of hours long and throughout the whole live stream there is uh, music it is creative commons music and most of the time it's not marked as as it's not taken down but even if there is like a tiny probability that it will be taken down then just looking at the time i i streaming since two months ago so statistically speaking i will get two more copyright strikes in the next 90 days so yeah so this is how the game looks like so uh, what could i do uh, i could stop streaming on youtube because youtube is not the only kind of player in this like ecosystem there is twitch there is tiktok there is i remember one more streaming service online where i could stream but this solution has some down downsides i could uh, i could remove remove music from my youtube streams it's possible i can stream to twitch with music and to youtube without music but that would be i don't know it, it, it would just be less engaging i think I, i'm just quiet for most of the time in my streams so i guess it's nice to have some background then there is there are those proprietary music libraries there is pretzel for instance it's a music library way where they have exclusive rights to their tracks so there is no kind of copyright troll like you media united media this united media company which can you know just send me false copyright strikes so because they are the exclusive copyright copyright owner for those music tracks uh, i will not get copyright strikes if i just use their music so this is another option i could create a separate youtube channel just for live streaming and you know just hope that they want uh, they, that they, those companies like youtube and the united media will do a better job but i have low uh, i i don't think that will happen and lastly i could just uh, keep live streaming do everything like i'm doing i will just hide the live streams after streaming and they will be hosted elsewhere maybe on twitch or some uh, external website so uh, out of all of those options the last one the last one where i kind of i, I still can live stream it's just the vods they will not be hosted on youtube they will be hosted elsewhere and this is the nicest because like it has downsides like every option but this one actually has some benefits so i did a test where i downloaded this music and i've put it on the automat site so if we scroll down on automat site we can see this new section called VOD Archive. Inside VOD Archive, if you click on this, 
you will see that there is like basically each of the streams that I've done is now a file that can be kind of played here. And I say played because when I click it, I can basically live stream it Hello, straight from the again straight from the website. And this kind of live streaming, it seems that it has no downsides. I can do live seeking. Uh, and this seeking, it's even faster than if I would do this on on YouTube or on Twitch. So the performance of this solution seems to be better. Then there are no ads, obviously, because like this is like self-hosted. There, there is nobody who would like to play ads here. We have the ability to download those VODs. So if somebody wants to watch them offline, they can do that. They can download them in like the highest quality because they don't have to be re-encoded by YouTube. Then there is this picture-in-picture -picture mode, which is like very cool. So most browsers actually support this. This is like built in into the browser. If you play just a video, bare video, you can just pop it out of the browser and we can switch to a different like web page and keep it playing. And this is pretty cool. So out of all of those options of fighting these uh, like the strikes by this company, uh, I think self-hosting the VODs is probably the nicest because I think it's one of those situations where a difficult situation, a situation in the end, leads to you know a better state. So I'm pretty happy about that. So live streams will not be taken down, and there is a separate kind of place where they can be watched. Uh, going forward, in terms of live streams, I will keep this live stream. On the in the VOD archive on YouTube, but every subsequent one I will just not archive. YouTube will just or I still have one copyright strike kind of margin of error before my account gets terminated. So I will keep at most one video on my YouTube page, so that the most recent one will still be watchable here. But then I will hide them so that they cannot be taken down. So uh, that's the VOD story. And I see this VOD story as uh, a good news. So yeah. something nice for a change. Uh, but uh, I have more good news. So a couple of days ago, uh, Cepha became uh, the first sponsor for Automat. And his sponsorship just accidentally amounts to, uh, over the year, amounts to $70. And $70 happens to be the price for the application signing certificate. So this is a certificate that can be used to sign Windows applications. And thanks to this certificate, this is a special offer for open source projects, so it's slightly cheaper. And this means that once Automat is released on Windows, it will, it will maybe avoid some uh, antivirus warnings and it will it will, this will reduce the risk of tampering by somebody you know, with the executable. So this is a nice thing and uh, it wouldn't be possible without Cepha, so big thank you. And uh, to everybody else who, is, who might be watching the stream, uh, so if you agree with the goals of Atamat, with making an intuitive, uh, intuitive, interoperable, uh, future-proof, efficient and free application for controlling computers, then, then please uh, take a look at GitHub 
there is the repository there and I am totally open to accepting uh, contributions. This is uh, MIT license. I may add the license that I'm, but if you can create a code contribution, uh, please do. Uh, I'm willing to accept any kind of code contributions that push the project in the right direction. And if you're willing to sponsor the project, uh, please also, also consider this option. And yes, hopefully with uh, some money we could yeah, do nicer things with Automat. And uh, that's it for today. Uh, thank you and uh, see you Monday for the next stream. And the next stream is going to be a regular coding stream. So see ya. Bye.